everyone. Thanks for having us uh, in Open Source Summit uh, North America. Uh, we are going to talk about the Rust Linux project uh, and give a status uh, update on it. Uh, my name is Miguel Ojeda. Uh, I am a maintainer uh, of the project. Hello, everyone. I'm Watson. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of the project. Uh, and Miguel is going to get us started. So Rust Linux uh, is a project that aims to bring uh, Rust support into the Linux kernel uh, as a first class uh, language. Uh, and by first class, uh, what we mean is that uh, it can be used uh, anything that you would use uh, the C language uh, right now in the kernel. As you may know, uh, there are many other languages uh, in the kernel, uh, some here in the plot. Some of them are non programming languages, others are used uh, to build the scripts and uh, utilities, etc. Uh, but the idea is that uh, if Rust uh, gets into the kernel, uh, is the second main language and, and could be used for writing anything that you will read right in, in, in C. Uh, so the bar that you see there uh, in the, on the right hand side uh, with RAS would increase uh, to the, eventually uh, to the degree or same order as, as C. So why we want uh, Rust uh, in the first place in, in the kernel? Well, the first uh, and the main uh, advantage of, of Rust is that uh, it decreases the chance of having uh, memory safety bugs. Uh, this includes uh, use after freeze, double freeze, uh, data races, uh, etc. Um, Rust system problem language that offers this, this uh, advantages in the safe subset, uh, as long as uh, the unsafe uh, code that we need to write in the abstractions is uh, sound. And we will see a bit uh, more about that later. Uh, it, we also hope that uh, it helps decrease in uh, logic bugs uh, because of the stricter uh, type system. Uh, and uh, with both disadvantages, should also help uh, on the development on reviewing the driver. For example, if you are a kernel uh, developer and you're writing a driver um, and you don't have to use unsafe code, uh, you stay on the safe subset, then you should not have, as long as again the structures are sound, you should not have any memory safety bugs. So you can be uh, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, also, because the type system is stricter, again, that should help more to, to catch uh, cases uh, where, where the the the, uh, the function that you are calling from, from the driver and the, and the types that you are using change. So, so the compiler ensures more things at compile time. And therefore, uh, when changing uh, through the feature and refactoring drivers and refactoring the abstractions should uh, help you catch uh, a kernel developer should help them catch more 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 bugs. Um, to reiterate a bit and to reinforce the idea uh, of why uh, memory safety is important, uh, I have here this slide which uh, reminds uh, that more or less, according to Microsoft, uh, Google, and other companies uh, that have done uh, some, they have extracted some data uh, on the issues, the vulnerabilities that they have had uh, over the last months, years, around 17% of them. Of the vulnerabilities uh, in C and C++ projects come from undefined behavior, that is memory safety issues, etc. Uh, you can see more in that, uh, in that link. So how does the, the project work? Um, how does Rust for Linux, uh, how, how we have set it up? There are several ways uh, to do this, uh, to integrate Rust and C in a project. Um, uh, but what we are doing in, in Rust for Linux is that we are encapsulating the unsafety of the C APIs that you see there in the right side of the, of the slide. We are encapsulating those APIs, unsafe APIs, uh, with what we call safe abstractions. This is uh, basically Rust code that wraps the, the C APIs and provides or exposes a safe API to the, to the drivers or other modules, or even other code but to simplify, let's say, uh, Rust drivers. Uh, you see there as well in the slide that uh, there is a forbidden line uh, from the drivers to the C APIs. And this means that uh, eventually we want to forbid any direct call from the Rust drivers to the C APIs. And this, uh, the reason for this is uh, one to, to a bit, um, um, avoid uh, uh, to have a bit more encapsulation from, from, the, from the C APIs. And second, and more importantly, to not uh, to avoid any any calls to, to direct calls to the unsafe CPIs and try to get the, the drivers to avoid unsafe code as much as possible. It doesn't mean that all the APIs of the safe abstractions are safe. We have some, and we may need some that are unsafe, but most of them are, are safe, and we want them to have, to, to be safe. In the in this slide, uh, we have a bit more. Uh, we zoom in a bit on the on the on the details, and you can see here, for example, the driver. Uh, my full driver uh, would right now call the, the 
kernel script. Uh, the kernel script is where we currently have all the abstraction for all the subsystems that we are wrapping. Uh, and these go into the, into the CPIs, which uh, we don't call directly because Rust uh, doesn't understand C code. So we use a tool called BindGen that generates a, a binding script, what we call, uh, from the headers, from the include, uh, from the headers that are in the include uh, folder in the, in the kernel. Uh, and exposes basically the, the bindings, uh, the, the, the C functions and the C types in, in their Rust equivalent uh, format or representation, if you will. Um, this, this diagram here gives a bit uh, an overview, a quick overview of uh, what are the different pieces of the project right now. Uh, this may change soon in the future because the kernel crate that you see in the right side uh, may be divided. Um, but right now, what we have is uh, the kernel crate, which contains again the abstractions, a macro script, which is for they are like plugins for the for the compiler that uh, the procedural macros are called in, in Rust. Uh, we also have, have the alloc crate, which uh, is a copy of the Rust uh, uh, alloc crate, which contains, uh, for example, the uh, containers and, and things that depend on, on, on or require a, a memory allocator, uh, which in turn depends on the core crate. Uh, the core crate is the one that contains the base or the foundational types and all the facilities of the Rust language. These, both, both the core and alloc, uh, we cross compile to, to whatever target we need. Uh, and the alloc crate, again, is, is for the moment uh, in the kernel tree. We hope that we can take it out and, and use the upstream alloc crate, but for the moment we need some tweaks or changes, so we have a copy in the, inside the tree. Uh, then we have other, other pieces, but they are not, uh, they are not as, as important. Now, uh, what uh, have we what have we done in, in, in the last year? So first of all, on the infrastructure side, uh, the first the first uh, point which is important because uh, it was uh, talked in the in the main list, uh, Linus uh, wanted to see it uh, gone, uh, we which were the panic allocations where we got rid of that. For that, we introduced the allocate into into the tree, uh, and there is uh, upstream in upstream Rust there is. Uh, uh, work going on on trying to provide uh, uh, this facility as well. We also moved to the latest edition of the Rust language. The Rust language has uh, this edition system that allows to, to improve the language uh, over time while keeping backwards, backwards compatibility. We also moved to the stable release of the Rust compiler. Last year we were using Nightly, the Nightly compiler. Now we are using the stable compiler. This doesn't mean that we are not using unstable features. But we are using the stable compiler, and we are tracking it. So we we update the new uh, to the new versions as they come up. We also got uh, some more uh, further architecture report. Uh, we got uh, some testing support as well. Uh, we are able to run uh, the documentation test, as they are called, the code that you write in the documentation. This is tested and is run inside the kernel as K unit uh, tests. We also got support for host programs uh, in Rust, which is uh, in the kernel is uh, utility programs uh, for the, that you use uh, for whatever tasks that you need to do uh, uh, outside the, the C compilation, let's say. Uh, and we also got um, on the fly generation of uh, the target specification file based on the kernel configuration. The target specific specification file is basically all the, all the um, uh, features or configuration that you need to provide to the Rust compiler to know how to compile to a to, for a given target. Uh, this is specific to the Rust compiler, and we are also working with Upstream uh, to see uh, how we can um, move from that because that part is uh, unstable. But previously, we didn't have this on the fly generation, so called customizing this target was was not possible in the prototype. Now, on the abstractions, uh, there has been a lot of work, uh, Wesson, which is uh, presenting as well and introduced himself uh, before, has been working on the example drivers uh, and many, many of the abstractions, for example, uh, some uh, foundational things like uh, red black trees, uh, as well as more uh, uh, other, other functionality that the drivers need, for example, you know, files, task, uh, credentials, etc. Also, a lot of synchronization features uh, like semaphores, uh, revocable uh, mutexes, etc. Um, we also stopped using ARC and RC, which are types from the alloc crate, and we are starting to uh, we started to use ref, uh, which is uh, simplified and tuned to the kernel. And we hope that, or we we expect that, through the, or over time, we will change uh, uh, other things and we will customize things to be more kernel like like we do in the in the C side. And uh, we also have uh, one important thing, which Watson will talk later, is uh, async. 
uh, and why it's important, uh, and we are, why we work on it, and what is coming. Um, on other projects, uh, it's important, I think, to talk about a bit uh, other projects and what happened uh, last year. Uh, Rust uh, stabilized uh, some features that uh, we, we were using. We will see a bit on that a bit later. Uh, we got some improvements on the on the upstream Rust in the compiler, in the standard library, in, in the tooling. Uh, we got some some things done there by by contributors, and it's, it has been great the experience working with them. Um, there is support now in the in the, in the ecosystem, let's say, uh, for the new uh, for the upcoming the new uh, demangling uh, uh, system for Rust. Uh, the kernel test robot from Intel uh, has started. Uh, Running uh, with uh, Rust Enable, which is great. Uh, we thank you. We thank them for for that. Uh, Linaros took it, also added Rust support. Uh, and then on the Rust compiler side, uh, Rust C code gen GCC, which is a backend for 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 the official or the main uh, Rust uh, compiler uh, to use GCC through the GIT uh, library, uh, got merged into the into the official or the main Rust repository. And GCC Rust, which is a new front-end for GCC, uh, gained uh, a few months ago uh, a new second full-time developer. So they have been uh, doing uh, great work and things have been speeding up. Also, Compiler Explorer, we did some, uh, well, not, not we, we, uh, we, we suggested some, some improvements uh, that they did, the team or the Compiler Explorer team, uh, which I think, or we think is, they, are, they are useful for, for kernel developers when they need to uh, uh, test some things uh, in Compiler Explorer and see the output. Uh, also on events, uh, we we presented uh, in, in several uh, venues uh, last year. Uh, here you see some of them, uh, and you can, uh, or most of them, and you can refer to them if you want uh, more information. Uh, as a fun uh, fun fact, uh, in LPC last year, in the keynote there was an informal poll asking a few questions about Linux and the ecosystem, and one of them was. Uh, what was the most uh, the, 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 the emerging technology that was the, that you were most uh, excited about? And attendees voted or said Rust. Uh, what Rust was the most uh, expected one, or the most uh, they were excited about? Uh, now today, uh, to give a bit uh, quickly the, the status, the status is still uh, as we have said many times. It's experimental. This means uh, we are not expecting uh, users to right away use it in production. But it's usable already for writing new abstractions, writing uh, new drivers, uh, and other modules. Even for writing new subsystems from scratch, instead of writing abstractions, you can, if you are a kernel maintainer of a subsystem, you can write a new subsystem from scratch instead of developing abstractions for the current uh, C APIs. Uh, we have two modules um, uh, working, even if they are not 100% complete. But, uh, we have two modules, a GPIO driver and, and the binder module for Android. Uh, which we have met in the in the past series. Uh, quickly through the architecture, we have this is the list of the architecture that we support. Um, and again, the target specification file is now generated from the kernel configuration. So uh, kernel maintainers of these these architectures can uh, tweak uh, the flags and can tweak the, the the features they need, and they can start uh, uh, providing better support for those architectures. We typically focus on x86 and ARM mostly. Uh, but we are happy to see more progress on, on the others as well. Uh, on unstable features in Rust, this is a hot topic a bit because uh, uh, in order for us to, to start putting a minimum version of, the, of, of Rust, of the Rust compiler, for, uh, to establish a minimum version for the Rust compiler uh, or the tooltip uh, in the kernel, like we have for GCC or Clan, uh, we need to basically cross all these features here. Some are more important than others. Some we can maybe work around, uh, et cetera. Uh, but well, uh, we wanted to show you a bit the progress uh, since the last year and, and what features went away uh, since the last year. And, and we are very happy that uh, we see all this progress in, in upstream that in Rust compiler. Uh, so for GCC, um, as, as I mentioned before, there are two main projects uh, to generate code uh, through GCC, apart from, of course, uh, LLVM in the middle. Uh, Rust C code gen GCC nowadays uh, already passes uh, most of the Rust compiler tests and can actually bootstrap the Rust C compiler. And Rust GCC, which is this new from scratch uh, front end, um, uh, is looking into compiler uh, compiling the, the core standard library uh, of Rust. Uh, so we are very, very uh, 
well, I mean, we are amazed about, about, about uh, the work that they have done uh, so quickly. So, so we hope that to start playing with that, with both of these projects as soon as possible to, to have the kernel parts of Rust compiled with TCC as well. And with that, uh, this is basically the main things we have been doing uh, or how things have got, uh, how we have got into this point and uh, the current status. And Wesson is going to talk a bit about uh, asynchronous Rust, which is something that uh, I already mentioned before, and it's coming uh, more and more things are coming in the, in the near future. We think it's a very uh, important, uh, or not very important, but maybe uh, something that you cannot really uh, do on uh, with C, let's say, and, and also we'll, we'll explain much better how, why, why this is the case. Yeah, thanks, thanks Miguel. Um... So uh, before I start getting uh, into it, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, what motivated us to do this. Uh, one piece of feedback that we got uh, last year on, on LPC was that we focus a lot on the uh, memory safety and undefined behavior uh, guarantees that, that Rust offers, right? Um, and perhaps we should also look at other aspects uh, of, of Rust beyond that. Uh, and, and, and one aspect that we feel strongly about is uh, productivity, development, uh, uh, developer productivity in general. And we feel that uh, asynchronous Rust actually is, is as, as Miguel uh, mentioned before, uh, something that uh, is, 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 is quite a, a big difference between Rust and, and, and C. Um, so uh, let's, let's uh, start uh, getting into it a, a bit more. So the, the, the first question that, that, that comes along is, what is asynchronous programming? What, what do we mean when we say uh, asynchronous, right? And, and what we mean is basically, we have a piece of code that, that we want to execute, but uh, for some reason, we cannot make progress. Uh, there's like a piece of data or some state that needs to be to be reached uh, that that hasn't reached yet or the data is not available yet, so we can't progress. That's uh, that's uh, when asynchronous programming comes in. Uh, when we, we are in these situations, there are usually two approaches to to these two broad approaches, right? One is to create state machines uh, and have events feed into those state machines and the state machines evolve, right? Um, and another another option is to have just dedicated threads, right? And then uh, you have straight line code. Uh, and then when, when you cannot make progress, you just put that thread to sleep, right? Uh, and then eventually when, when you, you reach your state or when, when data becomes available, the thread wakes up and, and continues uh, to, to make progress uh, as you want it. Um, the problem with, with this uh, second option is that while you wait for, for, for your state or data, uh, then that, that thread is, is, is idle, it's not, it's not doing anything. Uh, so you're burning a whole call stack and, and, and a bunch of state. Uh, for that, so this this actually doesn't uh, scale, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk uh, a little bit about that uh, later on. Now, uh, what is it that that uh, Rust offers that is is uh, helps uh, approach this 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 problem? Okay, so the, the first thing, and this is the, the the big differentiator between Rust and, and and C, here is that the compiler builds the state machine from straight line code. Right. So what you do is you, and, and we'll see some examples that will make this this clear. But I'll first introduce the, the concepts here. Um, uh, the, the, the developer writes straight line code as if uh, they were doing the dedicated thread uh, uh, way of doing things. So it's very straightforward. You'd like, uh, let's say you, you read something from, let's say, let's say you have a, a network server, right? So you, you read something from, 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 uh, from your socket, right? And let's say you've have, you haven't read enough information yet. So you, you wait for more to come. And then once more is available, you read more and so on. And then you start passing your data. And then start producing your your results and then writing them out. Uh, these are examples of steps that that uh, one could take in this straight line code, right? Uh, so the Rust compiler reads straight line code like that. Uh, there's a few differences between this, uh, which we shall see in a second. Uh, but then what the compiler does is it generates uh, uh, a state machine. Automatically generates a state machine for you, right? And and this state machine is a combination of codes and and context data. And, and this, this will, will be clear uh, when, when we get to the examples. So the compiler does that. Uh, and then once, once you have the state machine, you actually need to have uh, a, a way to execute these state machines, to drive them. Uh, so we have this concept in Rust called the executor, right? which is basically a way to, for you to, 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 to make these state machines uh, go forward. Um, and then uh, once you reach, reach uh, th those states where you cannot make progress, then uh, uh, these state machines register with a reactor right? uh, and, and then block. Right, uh, and the idea is that blocking the state machine doesn't block a thread. Right, it just like save some some state in the memory. It doesn't uh, take over a, a call stack. Uh, it's just some state in the memory, and we'll see that it's a minimal state. 
Um, and and uh, the, the thread that the executor was running can, can just continue doing something else, perhaps uh, another, another state machine. Um, and then this reactor thing is, is first of all, it's independent of, of uh, the executor. And what it does is, once that state is, is, is reached, when the state machine can make progress, it goes to the executor and says, oh, uh, the, the state machine is ready to continue. So the, state, the, the executor can uh, uh, continue doing that. Uh, and the reactor is independent of the of the executor, so you can have different types of executors, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, different types uh, in the in, in the kernel. Uh, and and one one piece of, of information that uh, I haven't given you yet is that the 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 work that the compiler does is is really just just the, the first part, the creating the state machine for you. Uh, it doesn't provide executors and doesn't provide reactors, uh, and this is related to to creating these zero cost abstractions, right? So the environment has to provide this. Uh, and we'll see that we'll, how we provide those uh, in the kernel uh, in a second. Um, so for for executors, we actually use uh, work queues uh, basically to 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 run the state machines. What, and and the idea is that each state machine holds with it a, a work item, right? And then when the state machine is ready, you just queue the work item, and it will eventually run and and make progress until it blocks again. Uh, and then the, the 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 work item completes its its execution, and the the, the worker thread can work on something else. Uh, we also have the option to run uh, in a uh, single, uh, single thread, right? We can have all the SIG machines uh, attached to, to a single thread. Uh, and, and for reactors, uh, in the kernel, we actually already have, of course, this concept of, of asynchronous uh, uh, behavior. So we have sockets. We can do read and, and write to the sockets. And then if the sockets are not uh, ready for, for reading, for example, then we can register. Like, when, when the socket becomes ready, please, uh, 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 tell my executor to, to, to run with me again. Uh, and then we have uh, 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 virtual file system operations, like you're reading or, or writing uh, to and from a file. Those, those may, may block because we have to go to the, to the uh, block layer to, to, to read some, some, some stuff. Uh, in fact, block layer also has uh, an abstraction, uh, uh, block layer I.O. Uh, USB requests, they have these herbs. Uh, we have timers, which is also a reactor you can say, uh, I want I want this this uh, uh, state machine to block for uh, ten seconds. So however long you need, and then eventually when when the timer expires, it it gets queued again and 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 gets to run. Uh, so here's here's a, a a brief example of what I meant when when I said that you you write straight line code. Um, uh, this is an, an echo server, right? So all it does is it accepts connections, and then for each connection accepted. It reads data and then, as data is read, it writes it writes the data back to the to the to the peer. Uh, and if you look at the acceptor loop, right, it literally just has a loop and uh, it calls accept. And if 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 it, if accept if we can accept a new connection, then we spawn a new task, which is the state machine. Uh, uh, and and this, and this is the one echo server stream. And it's this guy. And this async here is, is what triggers the, the generation of the state machine automatically for, uh, uh, by, by the compiler. Uh, and then if you look here, you'll see that uh, we, have, we have a buffer. It's here initialized. And then we have a read. Uh, and then we have a write. Right? And all, all uh, error handling and, and sleeping and blocking is, is, is in here. So this is a complete example. And this uh, gives you a sense of, of, of um, uh, how, how Simplified things are to have it straight line and have all the error handling and, and everything here, uh, and then to to give you a sense of of, of what the state machine looks like, uh, I'll show you here for for the for the echo server uh, state machine, right? So here's here's here we have the the, the memory layout, uh, and then uh, what what we what uh, the compiler does automatically for us is uh, it creates this truck, which is the context, okay, and then stream is is shared by by all the states. Uh, buffer is also uh, shared by all the states, right? And then we have uh, a, a tag here that says what is the state that we happen to be in. Uh, and then state zero is when the function starts, right? So there is no state associated with it. The function starts, it only has a buffer and a stream which are shared uh, by all states. So they are here. And what this does is initializes the buffer to, to, to zero. Right? It comes into the loop and, and eventually is going to call into uh, read. Right, and then calling to this read, we actually have uh, state one, uh, and this has a socket weight object in it, right? And this is how we, we talk to the uh, reactor, right? So we, we, we talk to the sockets and say, uh, if you're not uh, ready to be read, uh, then uh, I'll block and wake me up when, when you're ready. Um, 
And then there's a uh, uh, third stage, state two, uh, which is on the right, because the right can also block. If the peer is not uh, draining the, the, its, its side, then we won't be able to, 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 to write. Okay? And then I expanded this, the, the right all uh, down here. Uh, but the idea is that um, we have n, it's, it's this local variable here, which is the, the, the number of bytes that were read that we want to write. But within that function, we also have some state, which is the remaining buffer here. It uh, also uh, uh, appears here on the, on the state machine. And lastly, we have another socket weight um, uh, for, for waiting in case the, 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 the write blocks. Right? And the idea here is that uh, all of these states are overlapping. So this is a union. Okay, this is a union, and the current state here dictates which one of these unions is, is, is active, right? So one thing that is uh, really uh, interesting here is that um, even though this is, this is, we have echo server as a function that is calling write all as another function that may itself block, we actually don't need a stack to represent the state when we park this, the execution of this state machine because all, all the state that we need to have saved and restored at, at a later point is actually stored in this context. And the compiler does that automatically for you, right? Uh, you just use them as, as you can see here, like local variables, right? It's a local variable here, appears like a local variable here uh, on the stack and appears like a local variable here, but they are in, in fact just uh, context uh, uh, variables uh, stay, uh, stored in this, in this layout. Um, so you can think of these as coroutines or green, th green threads, uh, but they are also stackless and, and automatically generated uh, by uh, the compiler for us. Um, so why, why does this uh, matter to us? Um, th the main reason is that uh, the kernel has a lot of handwritten uh, state machines. Uh, and, and the kernel is intrinsically uh, asynchronous, right? It's, it's, it actually uh, has this mode of operation where uh, there's always some piece of data, some piece of state that we haven't reached yet, uh, and and then have just have to wait. Uh, and uh, when when we build these state machines by hand, we we can build these highly scalable systems, but they are very complex, right? And with this increased complexity, we increase the risk of of, of, of bugs, right? Uh, so what Rust brings to the table here is um, that it may actually eliminate the trade-off between simplicity and and scalability, right? When I talked uh, earlier on about uh, having burning a thread uh, and then writing uh, a straight line code, uh, that's not scalable, right? If you want to create a new thread for each connection that you accept, then, then eventually you, you, you uh, use too, too much memory to represent each, each, uh, each client that, that is connected to you. Uh, so, and, and Rust uh, eliminates this, this idea. You don't have to choose either you're scalable or you're straight line. I mean, you can do both with, with, with Rust and it's gonna be as efficient as, as, as before. Cleaning up is, is, is quite simple. Um, uh, I, we, we actually use this, this idea of drop implementations in Rust to, to, to uh, do to most of the cleanup, right? So for example, if, if, if you look at this code, for example, and this, this uh, 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 server is blocked here on, on the read, okay? And we want to, to terminate this disconnection. Really, all we have to do is, is come to this task that we created and say close, right? And what happens is, it knows that it's in state one, and it knows that the socket weight is alive, right? So it actually destroys this, this socket weight. And the socket weight uh, in turn knows that it's, uh, which socket it's attached to and, and knows how to unregister from it, right? So cleaning up is, is automatic. You don't actually have to think about it uh, uh, yourself and, 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 and implement it. And of course, we get all the uh, Rust uh, memory safety uh, guarantees. Uh, now here I have I have a bunch of examples. I'll just run through them and I'll leave I'll leave the 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 uh, slides there for 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 folks to to refer to it uh, later on. But uh, KSMBD is, is 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 an example of a server that we have in the kernel. It actually has a mixture of of the uh, uh, straight line code, uh, but not very scalable, and the the uh, state machine and 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 more scalable thing. But it actually has 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 a few problems. Um, which, which, well, the problem is is related to actually blocking, uh, even when it's doing uh, work in the in the in the work queue. Uh, there's another set of problem, which is which is this uh, in the in the in this even in the straight line code, uh, due to cleanup, uh, we actually instead of just blocking this this call, uh, it actually goes to sleep for a hundred uh, 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 microseconds. So we're like we're spinning, and every hundred microseconds we're waking up, right? And and the idea here is just that we want to see if the interface was removed, and we want to uh, 
uh, back out of this, uh, which is something that you wouldn't have to do with with, with Rust. Right? You could just close this 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 uh, state machine, and everything would 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 uh, would uh, be taken care of automatically. And this is here uh, the example on, on KSMBD of of uh, again straight line code, right? But blocking, right? So so read uh, can block, and then now we're burning a whole call stack on this, uh, and and this other read can also block. And then we're doing this, and then this process. FN actually creates a work and, 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 and hands it over. Uh, uh, NVMET is another example, but this one doesn't doesn't uh, uh, use a, a mixture. It actually just does the the state machine, and it's fully async, and it's uh, very scalable and and and, and great. But uh, it came it comes at at, at the complexity uh, extra complexity, right? So this is an example of receiving one thing, right? We have a state machine basically. Say if the state is this, then do that, and then if the state is this, then do that, and say this is do that, and each one of these can actually halfway through it fail because there's not enough data, so it, it returns with e again and then waits to be called again. Uh, here's the 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 send size send uh, side of things, uh, out a lot of states. Uh, and uh, the, the last example is is BCM two hundred three X, which is just doing uh, firmware uh, uploading firmware to 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 some Bluetooth device. Uh, it also has a state machine, and this is uh, related to to its USB device. So there's a USB device attached to the to the to, to some host, and uh, there's a state machine that is driven by completion of 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 uh, USB ERMs, uh, and um, so, so uh, what I'd like to show, and, and this slide here is just to re reiterate what what uh, I've said before, and Miguel has 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 said before uh, too. Um, the async REST actually allows us to to write straight line code, right? Uh, it reduces complexity, fewer bugs, fewer vulnerabilities. It has the same performance and scalability as the complex state machine manually written uh, state machines, and of course, it benefits from from memory safety from uh, from Rust. Um, so uh, uh, we feel that uh, uh, developers are more productive if they can uh, write this uh, code this way and, and, and not pay any performance penalty. Uh, and with that, uh, uh, Miguel is going to come back and tell us a bit more of, uh, about what's uh, coming along in the next year. Yeah, thank you, Wesson. Uh, for, for asynchronous as Wesson said, is one of the things uh, we are working on. There are other milestones that we have uh, for the next year, uh, and, and even if it is extrapolating a bit, we cannot, of course, promise the future. But what we want to see happen is, first of all, we want more use cases or more uses of the RAS support inside the kernel because um, this is basically uh, the, the end goal. Uh, having more example drivers, etc. Uh, we also want uh, to, to split the kernel crate that uh, we talked about uh, a bit before into into several and managing crate dependencies uh, throughout the tree, throughout the kernel tree, etc. Uh, this should improve development for 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 kernel maintainers and developers. Um, we also want to improve the integration of the documentation, the testing, and the rest of the tool chain. Uh, there are things to improve uh, in several areas. Uh, of course, one of the critical things as well is uh, getting more subsystem maintainers involved. There are some subsystem maintainers, a few of them, that are interested in using Rust. Uh, uh, they have contacted us, uh, but we want to see more and more uh, people joining, uh, trying the code, writing new abstractions, etc. Uh, as well as more companies involved and, and more researchers as well, uh, people from academia. Uh, we also want uh, um, to see the rest of the Rust feature that uh, I we will have listed before in that slide, uh, seeing most of that uh, gone. Of course, uh, we 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 are not exactly sure when, but hopefully by the next year we have. If we have the same number of cross lines, uh, uh, new cross lines as the last year, then we are mostly there. Um, now uh, we want to, as we mentioned, we want to play with uh, compiling the Rust portions of the kernel with with GCC. Um, and of course, uh, getting getting uh, getting merged into the kernel, which should uh, help uh, uh, everything else or make everything else easier. Uh, and we also uh, another point that uh, I would like to mention is that uh, we wanted to um, have some learning resources, write more learning resources, more uh, documentation uh, to use this this uh, this uh, Rust support in the kernel, which is, as Wesson said, uh, is, is something that uh, we have been uh, some of the feedback that we got uh, last year. Uh, and also, as a last, uh, very last thing, uh, there is some work uh, on the NVMe driver. 
that uh, Wesson started back then. Uh, Andreas uh, Hindborg uh, from, from Western Digital is, is working on. Uh, he may have something ready in the, in the future. Um, also, uh, there are some upcoming events uh, we are very excited about. Uh, the first one is Cangrejos, which is uh, the, the Rashford News Workshop. It's, uh, it's a meeting, a conference that we we organize to, to, to basically meet everyone that is interested in, in, in this effort. Uh, this year, we are going to have it face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, which uh, let's see how, how it goes. Uh, we will be also, right after that, the next week, we will be in, the, in Plumbers, in LPC. Uh, and this year, uh, we will have a, a micro-conference on Rust, uh, not just Rust for Linux, but also uh, everything Rust-related. If you are a Rust developer, you have used Rust, uh, in or outside the kernel uh, and you want to uh, speak there uh, please send us a, a proposal the, the, the call is open you have the link there uh, and finally uh, something we wanted to mention is that uh, well before the talk we, we mentioned that there is uh, there, there were two two uh, sessions of the Linux foundation live mentorship series uh, we had so two on um, code documentation on rust for the kernel and uh, on a bit of an introduction the first one was a bit uh, an introduction on rust safety what the safe and unsafe uh, in Rust means. Uh, and there are three more coming from, from Wilson. Uh, the first one is in July. Uh, it will happen in July. Uh, and the other two are being scheduled. Um, and with that, uh, thanks a lot for, for being here. Uh, we would have liked to be uh, live, uh, but we will try to uh, answer questions uh, in, in the chat uh, while the talk is, is going on. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye.